It's odd how water-themed VTubers are usually always the fastest growing in Hololive. I mean, it's not that I'm complaining, but it's odd that it happened like three times. But you know what's even odder? It's the fact that this current water-themed VTuber is Indonesian. That's not me being racist or anything, but it is a massive anomaly. Japanese and English speakers have always been commonly the most successful individuals in the community. So Kobo growing as fast as she did and breaking many milestones along the way sets a precedent for the VTubing industry. Especially so in markets outside JP or EN. So how did she do it? Let's find out. So before I try to pretentiously analyze why she got as big as she did, let's talk about the absolute state of Indonesian VTubing. Indonesia is filled with weebs, much like everyone else in Southeast Asia. But the thing that's different in Indonesia is that they actually are the richest region in the region if we go by this metric and the fact that they and Japan have a long history together. Even if Indonesians aren't willing to open their wallets compared to the East or the West, Indonesia is perhaps the most familiar with Japanese culture more than anyone else in the region. They also have the most population. Given those factors, it was only natural for Japanese VTuber agencies to expand there as an experiment to see how well expanding overseas would work. As years passed by, the Indonesian VTubing scene would prosper, as the culture would be cultivated by its own passionate and very supportive fan bases. But there's a problem. While there are Indonesian VTuber companies outside Hololive and Nijisanji like Maha5 that are absolutely successful in the region, nobody or very few people have really catered to the core Indonesian fan base. Indonesian VTubers aren't exactly as big as their Japanese or English counterparts. So for a long time, most Indonesian VTubers have tried to appeal to the English and Japanese scene, catering to the market that already exists, rather than try to hook their untamed mainstream domestic market. There's a lot of factors as to why that happens. For one, Southeast Asians, again, aren't exactly willing to open their wallets compared to the East and West, giving the impression that Indonesians aren't profitable. YouTube not allowing the Indonesian currency until recently may have also helped with that. VTubing is still a niche. Some people's perception may still be warped due to the VTuber boom of 2020 but VTubing isn't as big as other forms of content creating outside Japan and East Asian countries. It's still a very much developing industry with a lot of room to grow and a lot of places to fill. So trying to capture a mainstream market is pretty difficult as you can imagine. Three. Established Indonesian VTubers have shown that they've been more successful catering to the English or JP fanbase more than their domestic one. Case in point, Hanamakia, Mika, Oli, and Muna. The biggest Indonesian VTubers in both Hololive and Nijisanji erupted in both popularity due to engaging more with the English or Japanese fanbases. So as a result, people see that this is the way to succeed as an Indonesian VTuber, and people run with it. It seemed that for quite some time, the meta for Indonesian VTubers wasn't to cater to the Indonesian community. This prompted Indonesian fans to ask Indonesian VTubers to try and speak more Indonesian to connect with their domestic fanbase, but this plea would be often ignored or half-heartedly granted. It got to a point where Indonesians asked for that quite aggressively, but that would in turn make the out-Indonesian fanbase label them as toxic. So for quite some time, the Indonesian community would stick to their comparatively small and cozy sphere, being happy with any Indonesian VTuber that's present and thinking that this will always be the current state of their community. But that would all change when Hololive Indonesia Gen 3 would be announced. Pre-debut, everyone was looking at either Zeta or Kayla, because they fit the bill with what the Kai guys and the Japs want in a waifu. Zeta looked like Ketching's VTuber clone, and Kayla was an absolute mommy. Kobo had the weirder design of the three, but this would all shift a couple weeks after debut as unexpectedly, Kobo would take advantage of her character design in the most fitting way possible, speedrunning subscribers and reaching numbers that nobody thought was possible for someone of her background. She barely speaks English, she uses her model to the fullest extent by being an absolute brat and a literal child, and she's talented in a lot of ways. Because Kobo barely speaks English, she can't exactly appeal to the English demographic, making her exclusively Indonesian. And because she opts to speak Indonesian more, she taps into the demographic that has been asking for an Indo-centric VTuber. A VTuber that's actually Indonesian not just in name or generation, but also in practice. Kobo's not the first VTuber that attempted this. Local VTuber agencies like Maha5 has been relatively successful in tapping into this particular demographic. But Kobo so far has been the most successful. She's very cultured in Indonesian memes. 
Hell, her name itself is a meme. And she plays into the caricatures and behaviors that the Indonikis want from anime girls. And overall, she's the VTuber that they've been asking for for years now. This isn't to say that every other Indonesian VTubers out there don't cater to their Indonesian fan base at all, because they do. They absolutely do. Muna herself speaks more Indonesian than English or Japanese, but her popularity, I'd argue, is more so on the EN side of things than the ID side. The difference between Kobo and everyone else is that she goes to the extreme and almost exclusive end of catering to Indonesians rather than trying to balance her appeal to the EN and JP fanbase. However, this would in turn still make the EN and JP fanbase like her. Because being adorable is a universal language. The culture that Kobo fosters is a very good addition to the VTuber industry in general, and that makes it fascinating for fans to see thrive. And while in the Outdonesian fanbase she's very cute, wholesome and a little bit of a dum-dum, in her native tongue, she swears like a motherfucker, fucks with her viewers, and is like a literal child, an actual brat. But that's also what made her endearing. She's an absolute kusugaki and with this she harnessed the true potential of the Indonesian market to perhaps its absolute greatest effect. It would only accelerate when she got banned, twice, because asshole bots and YouTube being drunk. And that would only give her more notoriety as she took that ban like an absolute champ. And because she goes about this approach in her VTubing activities, she's broken out of the niche VTuber fanbase in Indonesia and attracted fans that aren't even into VTubers. She's gotten into the mainstream, where even streamers and content creators in Indonesia would often recognize her. She's basically the guru of the entire nation now the biggest name in the casual or normie VTuber scene. In fact, that's how she thrives as now. Where most Indonesian VTubers target the existing Indonesian VTuber market, Kobo targeted the Indonesian market in general. Her jokes, her memes, the way she responds, it's all relatable to the local fan base. <laughs> However, like Gura's situation in the past, she's attracted a few people that are new in the community. People that aren't exactly knowledgeable in the environment of VTubers yet. Because of this, there are Kobo fans that are rude, smug, and they often compare her with other people, even those that are already established in the VTubing industry. Especially since her viewership and her numbers are far beyond what any normal Indonesian VTuber gets. In fact, it's beyond what 90% of all VTubers get. So those kinds of achievements can often lead fans to compare numbers and spurge about how Kobo is better than most people. In fact, that's what happens to nearly all fan bases when their Oshis become massive. Kobo also plays into her achievements well, because she kinda didn't expect to blow up like this. She's an absolute brat, so of course she's gonna play like an absolute brat when she reaches these milestones. But beneath that smug exterior is a happy girl who didn't fathom or expect that she'd be loved like this. She's the third fastest growing in the industry, and it just goes to show how much Cover Corp, or really every other agency, underestimated how big local markets are. Nobody expected an Indonesian VTuber to reach this level of insane growth, so it's proof that there are still a shit ton of markets in the VTuber industry that are still untapped and that they only require the right person and the right skills to be able to harness it. The industry is only like 5 to 7 years after all. It's still pretty young. There's still a lot of undiscovered territories and all it takes is for someone to brave the wilds and explore them. Someone that can satisfy a demand that even those particular markets didn't know they had. Someone that can go on the deep end of certain niches and replicate the miracle of Kobo Kaneru. Call me a schizo, because unlike Myth or Loxium, I truly believe Kobo's tremendous success isn't a lightning in a bottle situation. I think her miracle can be repeated. VTubers and VTuber agencies just have to be smart in how they want to market themselves to various untapped communities. Be it the Spanish-Portuguese community, the Filipino, the Korean, and whatever place out there that is familiar with weeb culture. I've said this before and I'll say it again. The best way to succeed as a VTuber or a content creator in general is to target a niche, especially if that niche is barren and has a particular demand that nobody is satisfying yet. You'll be surprised how well you do once you set your foothold. Kobo is a very good example of this. I don't know if anyone else can tap into the Indonesian market again as hard as she can, but like I said, there are still countless of other communities that are left for VTubers to fill, even communities that don't necessarily have to be tied to a region or country. So if you're a VTuber now and is genuinely interested in a field that nobody is catering to, try your luck. Perhaps you're going to explode just as much as Kobo did.